What's up, everybody? It's a Hardy Construction. You can find us on Tumblr, or Twitter, as well. well. You can't find us on Tumblr. I always forget that. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. But really, if you find us on YouTube, that's where you're going to like us. With your comp and... Terra... Terra Molly Blue. And today's film <laughs> is... I really had to collect myself after you did that. <laughs> Terrified, also known as... Aterado, I don't know if I'm saying Aterados, 2017. Terrify, 2017, Aterados, original title. When strange events occur in a neighborhood in Buenos Aires, a doctor specializing Ooh. in the paranormal, her colleague, and an ex-police officer decide to investigate further. Directed by Demian Rugna, written by Demian Rugna, starring Maximiliano Guion, Norberto Gonzalo, Elvira Oneto, and a whole bunch mm -hmm. of other people. So, why did I pick Aterados, also known as Terrify 2017? Well, thank you for asking. Because you oh. wanted to be loyal to your people. That's hilarious. So I picked Aterados because I've been hearing about this movie for the longest time, for at least two, a year and a half at Is least. Is this a Shudder original? No, right? No, they make it and then Shudder buys it. It's almost when they say a Netflix original. You know how Netflix just... It's like a... Okay, so it's like yeah, a Yeah, Netflix exclusive. just out buy, buys out a film. Because that's what Netflix, and I guess Shudder does that now, is that Netflix will... When they, I thought Netflix makes things. They might do some, but some other films they just buy outright, and then they can say that okay. they created it because they basically buy the film so whoever created it can't sell it anywhere else. So it becomes, you know, with them only. Exclusive. So I guess Shudder does that as well. And Shudder okay. is um, it's an offshoot of AMC, the AMC channel. I, so. I uh, subscribed to it for a little while. Shudder? But they didn't have enough selection for me yeah it's so like I and i and i was looking at a website and i was looking at some um what was it uh some of the choices of the films and they look like like really bad but this is like about two years yeah it's like this is like honestly, two years ago. it's like it's like 20 percent good and like 80 percent like the c level horror. right yeah and, and like i've seen all the good ones basically right so because i was, like, I was looking I, I was um but there you know there are a handful that are pretty interesting that look good but they're only on shutter and you literally can't find them anywhere else like nobody yeah they can't get ripped off or screened for something and uh but there was like but now shutter has like stuff like creep show an original tv show on the on their which channel. uh are they now they're making a second night of the creeps by the way everybody i heard yeah i have no faith in that being any good so well it's the original cast yeah uh, okay I hope it's good. Who who directed that? It was Fred Decker who wrote it and directed it. Yeah, I'm it's sure. the original cast. That's the only reason that I could uh, are they, say is the it original writer working begin. on it, or do you know? I think he's working. I on it. I'm don't not sure. Know. I don't yeah, know. that was a good mix of genre. You hated that first movie, so I don't understand why you're so fucking I, hopeful uh, about it. Yeah, I know. I didn't. I remember I the review. I, I remember like you it. saying you just did not like the movie. So you doing this? Makes I don't. I don't no really sense. like it. Right. But I'm always excited for like bringing back. You know, classic movie. So, Terrify, 2017. I had heard about this film a long time ago. I remember seeing this pretty striking poster. The poster looks good and cheap at the same time. It's basically this person with their head split with a blue innards. and He's got weird innards in his head. The, tr the poster for it looks like sort of like a bad American horror film. So, I was like, I'm not going to watch this. And I just kept hearing like oh this is great this is great but look at that mouth position it's perfect for sucking <laughs> so i would always hear like, this is good it's good i was like all right was like, let me just you know i said that to myself out loud i said all right okay all right. i said it to the screen we're gonna do this to the computer <laughs> i'm gonna do it i said let's do this yeah and then anyway so inside joke it's inside joke uh you can listen to one of our episodes with thea to get what that is anyway so I went in blindly. I watched it in the middle of the night, and this is the first movie in a long time that made me jump at one sequence. You probably used... Uh -huh. I don't know if you... Which, there are a few... You know what I have to say, though? This couple? movie starts out so strong, Okay. and then it withers away. Why don't we get into the <laughs> opening? Yeah, I, I, I can see that, but go ahead. What? How does this film start out for you, Danny? Uh, it starts out awesome. There's a, a lady listening to her sink whisper to her, and then there's a man sleeping, his the husband's sleeping, and he hears some banging, and uh, he thinks it's his neighbor, but it turns out it's his wife really, like, graphically smashing into the wall. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, shit, like, right away. I was like, mm -hmm. this is a good movie. Was that, <laughs> that was uh... wonderful. It was a great opening. Was the neighbor, was that, f no, Funes is the cop, right? 
this is very this is a very um, yeah the names are hard uh, to sort of Rosen talk Co- is the only one that I Funes is the is the cop Jano is the old man okay. Rosen talk is the I guess the American Spanish guy because he had a very I guess there's Alicia a oh, I guess he didn't I guess the... it maybe didn't register to you but Rosen talk was an American character because his pronunciation of Spanish was very poor in the movie but I I noticed that but I guess maybe you didn't. Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah, Rosenstock was like I guess an American guy that was uh, I guess he he was played by an American guy too called George L. Lewis. I assume he's an American because his, unless he was, I have seen some pieces of Latin soap operas over here, and they'll have a Latino mm-hmm. character playing an American doing a very bad Spanish accent. So that might be the case for this film as well. But anyway, this film starts out with a guy who's wife is slaughtered basically she is um she, in a very fun way very fun way she is tr- uh not i was gonna say teleported no she's uh what do you call that lifted in the air levitated levitated thank you she's levitated in the air and she's being slammed between uh the walls in her bathroom smashing her head her head's like if i had to choose a way to go that would be it <laughs> so she's been having a bad time and obviously the the husband slash boyfriend is totally confused we see him. We see him at some sort of holding facility. It, I don't know if it's like for a place for the criminally insane. I assume because he doesn't look like he's wearing prison clothing, but it looks like. Well, they they say later in the movie that she disappeared, not that she was murdered. Okay, but I'm sure her blood was all over the fucking building. Well, that's what they said. They said the blood was everywhere and their fingerprints. Which so I think the they they think that he obviously is being held at a facility, um, for them. So right. which is a raw deal for a ghost to do that to somebody. You know what I mean? And, yeah, um, I mean, kill him at least. Don't, yeah. don't you know, frame him. <laughs> so anyway, uh, he is met by these three um, very X Files looking people, uh, an older woman and two older men, and they're explaining to him about these murders. They show him these very graphic. Fo- I thought one of the fucking photos was real. That's a pretty good graphic. In fact, it was like the woman mm-hmm. with the throat slashed. It might have been. There was a woman with the throat slashed. Who knows what the laws are on that issue? So in I think this film has a lot of creepiness to it. It is very eerie. Sort of, it's definitely much eerier yeah. in the beginning, and there is an eerie tone throughout the whole film until it sort of becomes um, a Bloomhouse Stagnant. movie at the end. It becomes that sort of Bloomhouse movie where you have to raise the stakes, and there's all this kind of wacky shit that happens towards the end of the film that doesn't lead to anything really, other than people putting themselves in the position to get killed by ghosts for no reason. Yeah, it felt like um, what's the one where that lady puts on that fucking elephant mask, Insidious or something. Yes, in city. Not in city. No, uh, uh, the, the the oh god, they're all the. It's same one of those movie. fucking yeah. movies, sinister. She puts on. It is in city. Like a fucking weird elephant trunk mask, yeah, it's and it's like, yeah. It, at one when point, she was automatic kind of writing, like, right? Or something like that. Yeah, at one point, it kind of felt like that sort of thing a little bit. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's that's like basically those, what like, I was saying. Kind it's of copy paste film. But anyway, the way the w- well, Blumhouse films are usually better. But that this was a one of the guys. This is the guy James Wan. Oh, that wasn't. But they were produced by Blumhouse, weren't they? Please look that up. Please tell I, me that was uh, maybe Bloom House. I assume they were because they're very clean cut. I could be wrong. I don't know. Anyway, so I, I might be wrong. An, an right. offer is made to this gentleman because he's been he's been looking for his name. He was actually I'm gonna tr- give you an offer you can't refuse. He was trying to look. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. He was trying to look for his neighbor, and apparently his neighbor had vanished too. Because his neighbor, you can see earlier that the neighbor is trying to call. Well, he was trying to call that woman doctor, right? And yeah. uh, she just wasn't answering. I, she. I feel like she she had agency in not helping him and letting whatever har- horrible thing happened to him happen to him just so she can investigate it. Yeah, the receptionist was a real asshole about it. Yeah, I it. think that's what was the ca- I think that was the case. I think the doctor was just like, "No, let him, you know, fucking get I don't know whatever happens to him, let him move into his walls in his building in his house." Yeah. So anyway, she he, what move, what happens next is that the old do- um the old uh the old man is introduced to a, a crime scene. Because apparently a young boy's body was dug up from his grave and put into his house where his mother lives. And isn't that the worst? And the mother was the ex-girlfriend um, of one of the uh, younger officers, this guy who has, a, I guess he has heart palpitations or some issues with his, ch- his heart. Yeah. And... Um, this is this was very fucking eerie and very spooky. Like it was. Yeah, that little kid did creep me out. Because the scene is just, you, you're just seeing this fucking corpse of a child. It's obviously really good prosthetic, you know, not prosthetic. It's just a dummy, like a, uh, a fake kid, sitting there. Could it have been makeup? Nah, it looked like 
it looked like a dummy. Like the kid, the kid fucking actually died on set because there was no movement in that thing unless it was maybe. And it was pup, maybe they killed and it the looked, kid. We don't again. We don't know the laws. <laughs> And it was like, uh, and it was also you can tell it was like either puppetry or CGI. You know when the other kid goes over the the uh, wall to look at it, and yeah. the head moves. It looks like puppetry because it doesn't look like natural people movement. But anyway, so this just the look of the kid looked very much like something you'd see out of a Guillermo del Toro sort of film. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just looked very. It was very stylized because this movie is very like the monsters in the film are very stylized, like very cartoonish and artistic but they're put in the very fucking, that tall guy one was the bald guy creepy. right and yeah. uh, anyway so the guy uh the boyfriend it was the boyfriend right? oh no, no no which which is the guy that was having the issues with the ghost running around his house and he had the camera set up was that the boyfriend or was that the other that was the uh, other guy right the, no no it's just a neighbor yeah Walter. that was the guy that was the guy who's um wait i'm getting confused we did like a we did like a flashback and it shows not the guy with the girlfriend right no, the guy with the girlfriend right. is the Right, the guy cop. who called the... No, no, listen to me. This is where we people lose us. Okay, so the guy who <laughs> sets up the camera to catch the bald naked man running around in his room... That is Walter. That was... That was... That, was the, that wasn't the cop. No, that was not the cop. That, that was the guy whose Walter. girlfriend Remember died? his yelling... Remember the guy in the very beginning, the husband, who's in the holding facility, is knocking on him and saying, stop making fucking noise, and then he finds out his wife was the one making the noise by banging against the wall. Yeah, and he tried to call the neighbor, right? So yeah, that was Walter the neighbor. is the neighbor. Yes. He is the guy who, yeah. Okay, so let's clear that out. So Walter's the neighbor. That's the guy who um, he's trying to catch at this ghost on film, and he actually does. He does nothing with it because he got caught. I would just take the fucking camera out of my house. I would just move out of my house. I would leave. I would have left the house weeks ago. Of course. Like if you're having issues like that, and you're getting paranoid. Well, what's the point of... Go it? stay in a fucking hotel <laughs> and see if it continues happening. What's the, I understand there's poverty. I mean, look, I'm telling you, man, there was a point like a month ago where I had water bugs in my house. <laughs> they were coming up through the radiator, and it was disgusting. They're fucking huge. They're like the size of your thumb. And I was sleeping so badly because of water bugs. Right. They're not supernatural demon monsters. They're just bugs. Says you. And I was scared shitless. So I w- if, if there was like a... a tall naked man in my room trying to kill me like i'd be out of there in a second yeah i mean i understand the the thought i understand the process for the film that you have to have the guy stay in the house because for whatever reason maybe he has pride i don't think so because the guy looked like he was i I mean it implied he was maybe like schizophrenic or something because he said he was on medicine but i mean the second i saw something silly happening in my apartment i'd be out um yep like I don't like. There's no real. Dude, if my light flickered, I'd be out. Like, <laughs> there's no real sort of proof in reality. Like, I like the idea of ghosts. Don't say that you're inviting. I understand to prove that. Your no, wrong. I, I don't say, I, don't say I like ghosts. I like the idea. I'm knocking on of wood. The paranormal. For you. I'm knocking on wood too. Hold on. When I get salt later, anyway, I'll throw it over. The my idea shoulder. of it is pretty fascinating because that lets you, you know, that gives people some sort of belief that there's something after all of this. I guess that's. I think that's an underlying sort of thing for people that ghosts yeah. are some sort of. But group. if this but is they're... what's after it, do we really want to take part in this? <laughs> right. These are the people I just left. I'd over. rather nothing than but, this. Yeah, but yeah, um, but pe- you know, the reality is, is there any real sort of evidence of it? You can see all these shows and all this bullshit of ghosts and all that stuff. Is it real? Who knows? Yeah. The idea of it, of it is fascinating. I think, I think it is, but... But um, I would like to think that it's real. But, you know, I'm still fascinated. I love all that, that dark, weird shit going on. But do I really believe in it? I don't know. Because I'm so pessimistic on some issues. Look at this guy. What a cynic. Oh, yeah. What an agnostic. But anyway, if if I saw something like that in my apartment, I would be out in a second. I would not want yeah. to deal with that. Because I don't believe ghosts has ever, have ever killed anyone. You know how they try to speculate in some things that ghosts have killed people. They'll make them fall out of buildings and all this bullshit. Right. It's never happened in the news that I see. You know who are the worst people? People. People are horrible. They do that stuff. Yeah, but people can't levitate a woman after whispering I know, and it her hasn't, faucet that they're going to kill for, you and then nail her against the wall. And as wall far as I know, it hasn't happened in real life either. But anyway, that is uh, that character's issue. He disappears. So yeah. the, um, the old man... Cut to a flashback. The old man runs into... Uh, the female doctor or female scientist or psychologist, whatever she is. And, you know, yeah. she has her, he has her paranormal investigator. He has her inspect the, uh, s- the location where the child's corpse is at. And throughout this whole film, it really is, it's still like, there's, it's just, there's a real dread to the movie, like a real creepy. You feel like, uh, 
it would be weird to have sex in front of that corpse? <laughs> like, would it be? Like, would it be judging you, or is it only concerned with things that it remembers from its previous life? I would like to hope that um, there are people that wouldn't even, the idea of it wouldn't even spring to mind in a situation like that because I it's mean, so upsetting and I mean, if you see bizarre. a corpse of a child, it really goes without saying. I'm sure there's pretty, there's a lot of serial killers that got caught that would say otherwise than from what I said, but you know what, we're not dealing with them right now. Yeah, we're uh, not talking about them right now. But anyway, so... There's a whole scene with a little kid who jumps over the gate. I, I guess the kid, does, his little friend, didn't know that uh, that person, that kid, was dead. Because you do get. I a, mean, it really started off strong though. In the first, yeah, there was a graphic like bus hitting the kid and stuff like a that. A wife uh, getting pummeled, a fucking demon, and the kid getting killed. Like, yeah, it, it seems like this film almost has like it's still little different ghost stories that they link into one film that they thread them together. But it's not that case. Yeah. Like then it becomes sort of a haunted house. Uh, thing by the second half of the film, where the three there's three scientists. Uh, the the old man, I guess. Yeah, he's but not like a you already like a, know what to expect. So it's yeah, not right. Really so the scary. the cop, the older man who was introduced to that crime scene, um, he goes and he he randomly meets the older lady, and then they this I guess this was the origin story, right? This is like total flashback that yeah. whole scene, and they decide with their friend uh, Rosen. I was I keep feel like I'm gonna say Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, Rosen Rosenstock. And Rosenthal. they decide that they're going to stay at these three individual houses um, and capture some sort of paranormal. Very intelligent. Yeah, they're trying to like prove that. that these random acts of violence that had paranormal, I guess, leanings towards them, that they would, uh, mm. you know, prove something. I don't understand what. I don't really know what their what their deal was. I don't know. So they decide to stay in these houses. The old man yeah. uh, invites the young officer to come with him. This young officer uh, is uh, has obviously palpitations he and he has uh, he has issues. And um, he is he's like his 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 slate is clean. He's about to retire in a year because of his health issues. And he doesn't oh, want. Little to, does he know what he's getting into? He should have turned it down. He, I would have. Yeah, I, I don't know why he decided to do he it. He already saw a fucking corpse moving yeah it was the cor- <laughs> it was the corpse of his um f- his girlfriend's son i mean yeah if that's not he enough saw issue, it moving yeah. so automatically you should be like all right i'm good like, if that's not enough I'm, issue I'm not I, I like he didn't see it physically move he just noticed that the t- it was different he on the saw table, it right? inside an ice thing oh that's right it did start smashing inside the box so i guess that is enough and knocking over cups yeah i don't know like if that if you saw that like <laughs> Yeah, no, I would, I'd be like, no, I'm sorry, like, I'm done, like, I would definitely, or I would fucking make it, like, so ten cops came away. Also, I found it very funny how he's pulling out a fucking gun. Yeah. Like, at, like, <laughs> yeah, that was funny. several times he's pulling out a gun, like, what are you gonna do with the gun? Yeah, I know, cause, like, maybe they thought it was, like, you zombie can't, rules you or can't something. can't fight, like, a demon with a gun. Yeah, like, so they, what the work. issue was, was, is that they decided to put the child's body inside of cement. And I guess they do it off camera, but for some reason the the mother got the kid still Obviously out. Obviously, doesn't reason. work. Yeah, but she still got the ba- the kid out. I guess the kid must have climbed out or had a jackhammer in there. You with see her. her with like a chisel. <laughs> yeah, right. So anyway, um, so the second half of the film is a little bit weaker than the first because, um, this is one of those issues. I was just thinking about it today. Um, I was thinking about the film Martyrs, where yeah. They explain. I don't want to ex- spoil what. Well, that's the like ending. three movies. All right, I get. It. I don't want to explain. I don't want to say what the ending is. But Martyrs has an explanation of why what is happening happens, and it's yeah. very. Oh, and by the way, we're talking about the original. Mario, Martyrs, the friend, not the, not the fantastic American, American remake. American piece of shit. The French original version, where that movie explained why the horror had been happening. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it made sense, and it worked. And it's very rarely does an explanation for a horror film ever work other than it's supernatural bullshit. And in this right. one, they have an explanation for the film, which is interesting. But it, it comes to sort of... Um, it was pretty generic. It almost becomes Star Wars midichlorians sort of an, <laughs> uh, uh, explanation of ghosts. It was like the mist or something. Yeah, because they, they're basically like... saying that ghosts are not actually ghosts, but beings in another dimension, and parts of them are seeping out into this world. Yeah, and it, I but guess, like, but are these they're ghosts also, like, or demons? They're the... not really ghosts. Yeah, and, and they're dragging people into the air and slamming them into bathrooms. Like, What, what is the point like, of a the, ghost? The, the little kid for? is a ghost that possessed his right. own corpse. right. 
but like that's not a, he's not dangerous he's just but is there. that because like, but it's because he's in that in that little section in that little house those three houses right. together are connected in that but sense. the but the creatures we're seeing they're not ghosts they're like demons and do that and does that all originate um from that crack in the wall that the that house with um this guy was in maybe walter that is a pretty creepy scene. So the the scene that fucked me up, honestly, besides the kid in the chair, uh-huh. uh because I was like watching that, going, hmm. Thankfully, he didn't jump up out of the fucking chair in the scene, because I would have been like, geez, I'm not really that scared of horror movies like that. But the one I'm scene that of ghost stuff, the one stuff, scene that yeah. got me is when the old man is looking out of his window, talking to Funes on the phone. Oh, and it jumps out the window. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that fucking got me real good. Because I was like, fuck me. Like, I was just like, whoa. I could literally had to turn on my light after I saw that scene because I was just like, that's too much for me. Even I was like, go. And uh, when a movie has a good jump scare like that, that's a sign of good, uh, well made um, sort of uh, filmmaking technique with it. But there was, there was a scene where he's looking under the bed and the guy's crawling away. And then all of a sudden he's like facing them out of nowhere. And that kind of got And me his a legs twist around and stuff like that. Yeah, but it like happened so quick, I, and that that kind of freaked me out. But mostly, it was like that, like creepy, like I'm putting my legs up on my chair and holding my knees, watching the yeah. closet door slowly open. <laughs> like I was, I wasn't bothered as much by the like the bald man antics. Oh, besides the the mirror, the window stuff. Like, um, I guess I was yeah. bothered by his antics. But um, other than that, like the part where the lady looks into the broken crack in the wall, and you see um, Walter like in silhouette, and his eyes are like glowing. Like, I was like, yeah. well, I was like, that's fucked up, too. But all in all, like, it's basically these three doctors or scientists. It's the old man who, I don't know, I guess the old man was like a, he was a fucking uh, detective or something? Because he did say he, he was like a cop that became a paranormal. Yeah, because uh, he had obvious. some situation where he used to be. Um, oh, no, no, no. He was an, aut- he did autopsies. Right, he did autopsies. And for, then, for police, Right, I okay, think. so it totally makes sense now what happened. He, he, but he saw the man, like, he, he. He says a ghost story where a man sits up and talks. And this is what... It reminded me of the show um, The Haunting of Hill House. Because that's basically... People, I've always heard of this, but never yeah, seen it. Yeah, it's basically people telling each other ghost stories throughout the whole show. And it okay. was it's pretty effective in this one. Because the the actors are... I think every actor in this film is really fucking good. Like, even if it's... You, know, yeah. you can't understand what they're saying. You can... They know how to, you know, do a scene. And so this guy who's an autopsy... Uh, I guess he's a forensics guy that was on on. Could scene. you um? So out of curiosity, could you understand what they were saying? You know, I don't even pay. I guess I was. I could pay attention. I wasn't really paying attention. I just kept reading this, reading the subtitles. I don't know if like the uh, dialect is like so different or something. I don't know. Uh, Buenos I Aires. No I guess they're speaking Spanish. Argentinian. They're speaking so. Um, yeah, I, but I don't know. Like you know, totally it's, it's, pre- it's pretty like similar. Part. It's not like Brazilian where Portuguese is a completely different sort of yeah, yeah. Spanish thing. But um, anyway, but I thought everybody was like really good. But the thing is, like the doctors are just leading themselves off into suicide missions for no reason. Uh-huh. And Rosen, Rosen, Rosen talk was a little bit strange because yeah, well, I don't think they understand what they're getting into. Yeah, I like the fact that Rosen talk was happy about what he was seeing. You know what I mean? And yeah, then Funes yeah. was like, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah, I like Funes's fearfulness made sense. But the fact that he yeah, went I would have had a heart attack too if I saw that. The shit. fact that he went into the other house after leaving one that was haunted to go to another haunted house is no fucking way. Knowing that his you reaction have, after though was the only one that made sense to me. I, I was surprised when he actually got out of the house and drove the fuck out of town. Like that made sense. Um, I didn't yeah, but no, this, going back and burning it all, I would have done the same. Yeah, shit. I didn't get the I didn't get the bizarre um, subplot of him getting in trouble for taking the kid's body out and like who gives a fuck like putting it under cement mm-hmm. like because you know what i mean like they took a photo and they were threatening him or some shit like that yeah i wasn't sure where they were like, going that, that that i mean make... i guess it's just to make more conflict because i guess they were supposed to make it look like he went crazy because he burnt down the houses and shit like that i guess um yeah uh, whatever but um i i thought it was uh i thought it was a little bit of a a loose sort of end that just didn't make any and sense that kind of ends really dumb and has a yeah really that, bad that ending is a cgi um, chair throw. you and i make fun of like movies where they'll do a freeze frame at the end i hate i hate when music. they do the cgi at the last that scene. was bad Every time. they, they should have although i could and say it's like a chair if they did a chair with a with a string and they threw it at the camera most likely they would have broke the fucking camera so i understand why they did it with cg but that was sort of yeah. weak. I did like the fact. I did like that that the guy. Um, what's his name? Was it Juan? 
the, the it would have been better if they just left it as the chair is moving and him saying he came with you and then just cut that done like or they you know, or like if they just showed the chair and it just pushed in you know that could be pretty interesting I don't yeah know. like we know there's a ghost and we know they're violent i did like that i did i did the like CGI the eer- chair. it felt like it was like it was eeriness creepiness and then it went to like po- like craziness and then it went back to eeriness for that final take because they did like the part yeah. that he goes, oh, that guy there is with you, right? Like he's talking off camera and stuff like that. Which was the guy they were saying. He said he knew who it was from the picture. Right. But it didn't feel like it It was uh, like the, the the big chaotic effect when they're all in the houses. Like it didn't feel like it meant anything. Like yeah, this was just leading three people that we saw just to their death. Like I understand that's what you see when you see a horror film. Like these people just die. But it didn't seem like it meant anything or was for any purpose or it didn't serve anything because... Also, they weren't scared, so... Right, like, they just willingly sort of went in. Like when I, the lady, I wish they had gotten more into that one guy going crazy as his hand got stabbed and everything. Yeah, and the lady getting her head twisted around and this other guy's eyeballs turning fucking green and shit. And then Rosen... They don't, you don't see Rosen, uh, Rosen talk die. But, uh, you know, Funes, like, burns down the whole... All three buildings, I guess, or three houses. Uh, so... I think it's a very strong opening, uh, a strong beginning of a middle, and then the sort of it's because I don't think it's a horrible movie. I actually enjoyed it, um, but I do think yeah. that the sort of resolution is weak because all sort of haunted house movies are the same, where people go into a house and they, you know, a multitude of them die, and then one person pretty much gets out alive. And I don't know why I feel yeah. differently from this one. I think it was because it was so strong in the beginning, and they sort of. It almost feels like they were trying to solve a mystery that they just decide not to solve in the latter half. Like they, ex- right. they have a, they, they have an explanation for the mystery, but then it just it just opens a bigger mystery because they're like this guy's w- wife was killed, and we're trying to figure out why. We're gonna go to these houses and figure out what it is. So then the one guy comes right. in and then she says, "Oh, we believe it's these fucking aliens from another dimension. Yeah, you know, just like water or mist or something." And you're like. What? What the fuck did you just say? <laughs> like, what does that mean? Like, explain that to me. And then she gets her head twisted, and then uh, that's it. Then the guy runs yep. out the house. Like, don't introduce that unless you're gonna fucking fully sort of get into what that means. Because if you introduce an idea, I've never heard that idea really. Maybe in science fiction films. Yeah, we have. It's like the mist and shit. No, I get it. But they're saying that the particles of them are here. Like, the mist is because of fucking there was a tear in reality. In here, right. they're saying it's like just water, like pieces of mist that fly out. It's not like there's an actual tear in reality. It's just pieces of them come and form over here because they have no physical embodiment in this place. And, and if they're in their yeah. other dimension, are they doing this, flipping around and shit like that? They, what are they doing? <laughs> you go to the other dimension and it's just like they're totally normal, but then they get to here and they're like, let's fuck with these people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's how they read their morning <laughs> newspapers, like flipping through walls and sideways and shit. And then they go home and they're like laughing about yeah, it. Yeah, they're over reading coffee. like upside down newspaper. Oh, upside down newspapers. What does that mean? But yeah, so that's what that was my <laughs> issue is that they introduced this radical idea that doesn't make any sense in the context because it's a horror film that becomes some sort of weird science fiction element that doesn't make doesn't mean anything. You know, you yeah. might as well just say it's fucking ghosts because it doesn't matter how you explain it. It's, it. It seems like they wanted to make some sort of weird scientific illusion, make it smarter than it is, but if it if it's not it's the same way that they made the whole idea of like him getting caught on camera or whatever it's like it doesn't matter yeah it's sort of like they they use this very sort of interesting unique perspective to explain something but they felt like that was strong enough to explain it away then you're like oh okay i'd be like no what does that mean i want to know more about that you well, know what we mean? would rather learn but then she got her head twisted off. yeah then it, like that's like a half an hour of the movie they just got rid of like if that bald man came out and started although she did run out with her head bent backwards yeah, that, that, that was, was definitely nice. something out of a fucking del toro like that scene got me too i was like woof like that was pretty good but um yeah. that was like certainly something that they could have expanded upon like if that bald man was talking to them or something like even what was that stupid movie that we saw the um the pyramid not the pyramid was it the pyramid not the pyramid um uh, uh you know the movie where it was the cults um all those people in those white sheets outside of the hospital and all those people were trying to survive and then there was that doctor yeah yeah i know what you're talking about the pyramid no the pyramid's another movie the void the void right you know how the void where they like it was i didn't think that movie was very good but it had interesting ideas and then the the evil doctor at the end has an explanation and that was like oh okay 
I get it's it. It's like now. an HP Lovecraft culture. Yeah, or because like one of them is explaining what's going on, and you know it worked for it. Even if the movie wasn't that good, it was that part was cool, and the doctor was a cool yep. looking fucking character. Here they don't do that. Here, if that doctor, if that hey doc, if that doc, we gotta go. But if the <laughs> if the bald man came on and said something, you know maybe. But I guess people, you know, you know I. I want a little bit more. This might have satisfied people. He has like this people. weird, very high pitched Mike Tyson talking voice. <laughs> <laughs> you see, now place it was it was pretty scary. We're coming through here, your country, because we're gonna eat some of your people. Like, we like we like water coming from a different dimension. Do you have any pigeons here? I could train so they could fly. Anyway, that's what Mike Tyson <laughs> does. Um, so yeah, it's uh, I, I overall I still enjoyed my experience with the film. You know what I mean? I mm-hmm. thought it was good. I didn't think it was a waste of time. I thought, certainly stylistically and and production wise, it's like an, a fucking A for how it looks. This makes me wonder of how many films that I don't watch from other countries that are just this well done. I think that every time we do a foreign movie, because they're all fucking good. <laughs> That's true. Because like we're not they're gonna all like proportionately better. I get. I mean, then again, we're purposely choosing high rated foreign movies. Yeah, it's but... true. Like I would, I would watch this above good. some random fucking horror film that came out here in the U.S. That's Yo, like I would too, shit. without any hesitation. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it's uh, for that I would give it a um, for what it is. I'd, I'd actually give it a s- seven um, for what it is, um, which is higher than usual. My six is sort of like mm, it's good, but seven I think it's better than good. So I'll give it a seven out of ten. Asking uh, the gr- your ex girlfriend to drive you to the hospital with your son's corpse in tow, and still wondering, boy, why'd I date this woman? <laughs> yeah, right. She didn't even get in the car. Nope. <laughs> Fuck that. Uh, <laughs> I give this. I agree with you. I give this a seven out of ten. Um, giving a corpse a cup of milk. Mm-hmm. That's it? Okay, very good. And with That's that, it. Danny, what's the final word? Cop it, cop it, rug, man. The horror deconstruction.